A few weeks ago, President Muhammad Obuare promised to assign to the Electoral Act Amendment Bill once the National Assembly re-amended the legislation to include indirect primaries and consensus as options for political parties to select candidates seeking elective office. On this basis, the legislature reworked the bill in line with the president's position and sent it back to him for his approval. However, this has not stopped governors and ministers on the platform of the All Progressive Congress from lobbying President Buhari not to append his signature to the re-amended legislation. This time around, the Attorney General of the Federation, Abubakar Malami, who is believed to have aspirations for higher office, is said to be uncomfortable with a clause requiring members of federal and state cabinets to resign before they can participate in party primaries. Also, the governors are displeased with the definition provided by the National Assembly for the consensus option. In amending the relevant clause, the legislature defined consensus to mean a candidate can only emerge after all contestants sign a written agreement that they have consented to the adoption of the aspirant. This means that a single dissenting voice can validate the adoption of such a candidate. We are joining us now from Abuja to discuss the unending self-serving politicking over the Electoral Act Amendment Bill is Senator Seydou Mohamed Dansadao. Senator Dansadao represented Zamfara Central in the National Assembly between 1999 and 2007 and is a founding member of the National Rescue Movement. Good morning, Senator Dansadao, and welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be with you this morning. Thank you for joining us. Well, let me ask you, um, what's your take on this Electoral Act Amendment Bill? Only this morning, one newspaper on its front page, I think it's Leadership Newspaper, in our newspaper review segment, uh, said, look, CSO, civil society organizations, have given the president seven-day ultimatum. Other groups, uh, including uh, the PDP caucus in the National Assembly, have also urged the uh, president to sign the bill as amended, as re-amended. But there are those other issues that I have raised. APC governors uh, allegedly complaining about certain provisions um, who can go to court uh, when uh, there are issues with qualifications or other details in the what is submitted to INEC, uh, whether or not uh, you know, uh, aspirants taking part in primaries should resign or not, uh, so many issues. What do you think? What do you advise? Yeah, honestly speaking, the first um, instance, I think the National Assembly should be commended for two things. One, the first uh, bill they passed, which they sent to the president for assent, which he returned to them, uh, was in fact the yearnings and aspirations of Nigerians. Because Nigerians are in their need of free, fair, and credible election. And what they have done in the uh, bill was in fact uh, to satisfy that aspirations of Nigerians, not only in respect of general election. In fact, more disturbing to Nigerians is the way and manner political parties in Nigeria conduct their primaries. They hide in the name of consensus to impose candidates, you know, on the electorate. Number two, uh, when Mr. President withheld his assent and uh, returned the bill to National Assembly, and uh, they took into consideration, in fact, they accepted his observations. And they reworked the bill. And they sent it uh, back to Mr. President. My advice to Mr. President, is to ascend to this bill at this point in time. 
What I have realized is that uh, some governors want to hide behind the back of the president in order to get what they want. Or, uh, in some respect, they have declared war between them and the National Assembly. And instead of facing the National Assembly to fight this battle, they want to go behind the president to get what they want. I don't think it is the right thing to do. Uh, after all, as far as I'm concerned, anybody who abhors this, the provision of the reworked bill is uh, not interested in free, fair, and credible election. After all, what they have put in the bill now by uh, uh, providing that uh, public officers should resign. This has, been, this has been the tradition in party politics in Nigeria. Whenever election year comes, Though it wasn't a provision of law, but previous president, elected president, in order to be fair to other people that are going to contest against public officers, the president will direct all those interested to contest for any office, any elected office, to resign in order to provide a level playing ground for all contestants, and that's the best, to, best thing to do. And I think under Buhari's administration, going by his, his credibility that has been attested, uh, both at home and abroad, I don't think he can afford to uh, tarnish that international reputation that he has built by uh, succumbing, you know, to what I would describe as fraudulent uh, uh, quest of some uh, public officers. I think he shouldn't do that because it is going to adversely affect his credibility and the international reputation he has built. Well, there have already been six times when President Muhammadu Buhari rejected electoral uh, amendment bills and refused to sign them into law. But my question for you as a former senator, can you let us into the workings of the Senate and what the National Assembly in general had in mind when they did not restrict themselves solely to the one clause President Muhammadu Buhari found objectionable. He was quite clear about that one clause about direct primaries and gave his reasons whether or not anybody's convinced by them, but he gave his reasons. He did not want parties restricted to just one mode of you know, nominating their candidates. But the National Assembly has gone beyond that and has taken the opportunity to add some more, to insert some more clauses. Do you think that that was the right thing to do? What, what was the thinking, what was the rationale behind that decision, rather than just stick to what the president clearly stated in his letter? Uh, in fact, uh, not only the right thing, but that is the best thing for them to do. Why? Remember, they too, they have, uh, they have to protect the sanctity, you know, of the legislature. Remember, when the bill was sent back by the president, Nigerians uh, were expecting that um, uh, they will override him by passing the bill by two thirds. But out of respect for the president, they considered uh, his uh, reservations. But in order to pacify Nigerians who, you know, accused them of being kind of uh, turning the National Assembly into a stooge, you know, of the executive of, of government. So they thought very critically to provide certain provisions, you know, that Nigerians would be happy with. Remember, they are the representative of the people. Whatever they are going to do, 
they have to take into consideration the interest of the Nigerian people, but not the interest of uh, public officers, governors, or whoever. So the interest of Nigeria is paramount. And if you critically observe the other areas they went to, in fact, Nigerians are very, very happy with it. Very, very happy. I, for one, I, I commended them for what they have done. Um, they have proved to me uh, that um, they are truly, they are truly committed and interested in ensuring free, fair, and credible election in 2023. So they want to leave a legacy of improving the process of free and fair election in this country. And all Nigerians should commend them. And I think uh, President Muhammad Buhari should join them, should join them in meeting the aspirations of Nigeria by assenting to this, uh, 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 to this bill so that it becomes law. If the governors or any public officer feels uncomfortable, he can go to court. That's the best thing to do. But Mr. President and his doctors should advise the president appropriately not to tarnish uh, his international reputation on this matter. Let him assent to that bill. That's the best thing for him to do because after all, this is one of the best legacies that he will, he will leave. And um, uh, posterity will judge him for doing what is right. That's my opinion. Okay, you say Nigerians generally are happy with what the uh, National Assembly has done well. Maybe you should just speak for yourself uh, in that regard, because there are many Nigerians who think that this Ninth National Assembly is uh, a rubber stamp assembly. And the governors who are objecting no. to some of those uh, provisions in the re-amended bill, I guess they are also Nigerians. So it's not as if there is a meeting of minds in this regard. But why are the lawmakers, as alleged, uh, so uncomfortable with the influence of governors? Are they not pursuing their own selfish interests? No, you see, uh, it's not at all times that um, uh, they are not in consonance with the opinion of governors. I think um, uh, the fundamental thing is, like you said, earlier than the time they worked, they worked on the, on the electoral bill, and all of those who believed that, yes, they have become somehow strategists uh, of the executive of, of government. But by what they have done on this bill, that has completely uh, ward off my earlier belief. They are not by what they have done and their commitment and the interest, you know, of um, uh, becoming uh, an electoral act that stands the test of time, I think, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, is worth commending. And while they are disagreeing with the governors now and the other public officers, is because it is so clear, it is so crystal clear that what the governors, some governors and other public officers are, 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 are pushing for is, is, is selfish. It's not in the interest of true democracy. They are trying to come up with something to make sure that uh, it is business uh, 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 as usual. Whereas the Electoral Commission, uh, INEC, and the National Assembly, their focus at this point in time is to leave a credible legacy of free, fair, and credible election. This is an excellent, as far as I'm concerned, uh, pro, uh, 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 amendment that they have made to the bill following the um, was of an asset by the president. It's an excellent thing they have done, and they need to be commended. And Mr. President should join them, you know, uh, in this effort. Okay, thank you, sir. Now to the thornier issue of people's rights. Is it actually 
going to be a problem, do you imagine? The fact that aspects of this reworked bill, as we're calling it, seem to contradict the Constitution. And you know to that extent, such contradictions will be null and void. Trying to police people and telling people essentially whether or not they can contest for an election. Is all this not setting the stage for yet another presidential decline of an extremely important electoral act? Bill. No, you see, it depends on uh, one's uh, opinion. And like I said earlier, if anybody feels what they have done, you know, contradict any provision in the Constitution, uh, he can go to court. The judiciary is all aware about the importance, you know, of this uh, uh, electoral uh, act. So therefore, even if judicial process is put in place by those who feel aggrieved by what the National Assembly has done, the judiciary will do the right thing by accelerating you know, uh, hearing and decision on the matter. So as far as I'm concerned, we better do the right thing, no matter how long it will take, because we are becoughing, the National Assembly is becoughing, uh, you know, a, 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 a credible uh, electoral act. So it's worth, it's worth it. Okay. But the delay from the, from the executive side is what really bothers me. So. Uh, let the president say take a decision, which for me, I advise very strongly that he ascend to the, to, the, uh, 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 to the bill, which shows that he is neutral, that both the governors and other public officers, his appointees, and the National Assembly are equal to him. The two are fighting one another. For me, it's not a fight, but um, it is... Um, a struggle between the right and the wrong. As far as I'm concerned, the bill as it is today on the table of Mr. President is the best thing to give this country and to give our democracy. Okay, uh, Senator, uh, we have just about five minutes uh, to go uh, with this conversation. So two quick things. One, what do you think of all the uh, presidential aspirants that have shown up uh, so far? And uh, do you think uh, really that the administration is committed to ensuring uh, a credible electoral process in 2023? And if you have just a second, you can talk to us about the National Rescue Movement, of which you are a founding member. Well, um uh, for me, if uh, the president still withholds his asset on the bill, then uh, I will doubt that uh, he is interested in free, fair, and credible election. But if he assents to the bill as it is now, then uh, he has met his promise of uh, ensuring free, fair, and credible election in 2023. Uh, now, talking about presidential election, for me, I'm very happy that there are so that there is proliferation of uh, presidential aspirants because it provides an opportunity to number one members of different political parties to choose the best. And this opportunity for members of different political parties to choose the best is what the bill we have been talking about that has provided. That's what, what, what the bill has provided. That's number one. So number two, it also gives political parties the opportunity to now do a diligent and painstaking exercise in screening the presidential candidate objectively without any sentiment, a process that is devoid of completely any sentiment, but looking for the best, going by the political history of every personality that is aspiring, 
take you into consideration history of the success history of every individual also aspiring. Because anybody aspiring to become president must have held different kind of uh, offices either in the private sector or uh, in the public uh, domain. So therefore, you'll be able to judge the position somebody held who is aspiring now, did he deliver? If he was a governor before, a senator before, how was his performance in his office as senator or as governor, or as permanent secretary, or as minister? These parameters uh, have been provided by this bill for political parties to choose the best and give Nigerians the best, which will bring a keen competition between uh, different political parties if all political parties bring the best out of the aspirant, devoid of any, 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 any fraud, any corruption in the process, like you have witnessed, particularly in 1999, then uh, the political parties then are given Nigerians the best of Nigerians to choose from. And that's what uh, will take Nigeria uh, uh, to, the promise, uh, to the promised land. Then, uh, talking about the NRM, um, I'll quickly say that NRM is unique, distinct, and different from all the 18, from all the other 17 existing political parties in Nigeria. Why? Because we have not less than 33 innovations, initiatives that have never been in the constitution of any political party, in fact, from independence to date. Let me just cite two examples for you, because we have no time. One, we are the only political party from independence to date whose structure is up to polling unit. Like you have executive committee at the national, state, local government, and world, that's how we have officers and executive committee members at the polling unit. The wisdom behind this is, I will tell you many, and there are so many other things, but I will just tell you only one out of the wisdom for doing this, that if we win presidential election or any governorship election, these polling units will be transformed into community-based development associations. And under them, we are going to direct for registering of cooperative societies. These cooperative societies are the vehicles we are going to use to provide agri uh, uh, skill, uh, skills, uh, uh, small-scale businesses loan to the rural people. In other words, we are going to use polling, uh, 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 the community-based development associations and the cooperative societies as vehicles for rural and economic development in this country. This is so radical in terms of changing and growing and developing the economy of this country. Second thing that is unique to us, we have a provision in our constitution that for any member of our party to rig election in favor of our own candidate is an offense that will be punished. Well. <clears throat> so why, why do we make that provision? Because we believe that anything illicit Anything fraudulent will be cast by God. And people don't know until maybe you draw their attention to that, why we have been prob having problem with governance from 1999 to date is because of the way and manner elections were conducted, rigging all over, thugs, using thugs, killing people, all these things are Crimes against God. Well, and once note. in the process of getting anything, you commit sins against note. God, 
But the teaching of the Holy Bible and the Holy Quran, God is going to cast that thing when you get it. Be it power, be it money, be it anything. It will not get no, the blessing no, of God. Uh... And that's why we have been degenerating the quality of leadership in this country from 1999 to date has been degenerating to this level. And until we change by doing the right thing, pleasing God in the process of whatever we do in politics in this country, we will never get out of this cogmare. So I'm just telling you, I have just now told you two out of not less than 33 such new innovations well. On that, that note, uh, we have Senator. planned to begin into the politics of this country. Well, Senator. We are not just a political party. We are a movement. Well, thank you, Senator. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator.